Hello, YouTube fam. How y'all doing? It's your Uncle Tim. This is Uncle Tim Rants and Reviews, a channel where I rant and I review, fam. First of all, thank you for watching. Thank you for all the love and support. And thank you for the positive energy. This is not just a channel. This is a community of collectors talking about things, dealing with collecting. Man, to everybody that joined the group, Uncle Tim Rants and Reviews, thank you for posting your pictures, letting us know where to find stuff, the deals. I want to say thank you. Uh, to everybody that uh, subscribed or followed me on Instagram and TikTok, I want to say on TikTok, we reached a thousand followers. I want to say thank you to that. Um, and on this channel, we hit 20K. I want to say thank you for that. You know, we were talking about distribution, you know, uh, who fault is all of this shit, you know, like from, uh, you know, I hear so many people say it, you know, they say, Unk, you know, the stores, they order from the manufacturer. Okay, I get that. You know, the stores are at fault for distribution and things like that. I get that. But see, the thing that a lot of people don't understand, it's not the store fault for faulty merchandise. The store, one, they're not the ones, you know, who's selling stuff with windowless packaging. They're not the ones who have, you know, shouty, you know, um, sculpts and details. The colors are not matching, you know, Paint is chipping, you know, faded stuff, you know, stuff that if you would have actually seen your damn self, you'd be like, no, nah, I'm not going to pick that one up. Let me see if I can find one better. No, but this is the actual manufacturer. Manufacturer are creating manufacturing issues. You know, you can't blame the store. The store is only responsible for distribution. And if, you know, it's in certain areas, that's the store. And, you know, a lot of people say, hey, Unc, you know, because I used to work retail for a very long time. And, you know, we used to order merchandise, but a lot of merchandise comes automatic. Certain merchandise, you know, you may get, but certain periods of time, you may get tons of that merchandise. But I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the damn scalpers, fam. You know, the people that go to the store and, you know, pick up all the damn merchandise that you're interested in and sell it on eBay or Amazon for a damn a mock-up out of this damn world. they selling it for three or four times higher than what the hell it actually is going for. If the figure is $25, they're trying to get at least $75 or $100 out of it. Man, shit, that's the shit right there that makes you just leave this damn hobby alone. That bullshit. Them scalpers. Those resellers. Not every reseller is the damn issue. Now, don't get me wrong. You got resellers out there who's just, I'm just trying to get rid of this shit. You know, think about it. You know, I can't I can't blame the people who's selling, you know, the Red Tornado that's $19.99 in Target and Walmart. You would just say $20. But online, they're selling it for $25 plus shipping. I can't get mad at you for that. You like shit, I'm going to make something off of it. You know, my thing is, look, I'm looking at the people who selling this shit for 50 and $75. Come on. Those are the people that you look at. Those are the people that ruin the hobby. Those are the people. When people showed interest in this stuff, collecting as a whole, that's when people seen a benefit in coming in and becoming, you know, that third party. You know, look, shit, we don't cut the middleman out. No, nah, I'm going to be the middleman whereas you get this shit from because you ain't going to get it from the store. I'm going to buy it all up. In fact, I was just sitting there thinking to myself, I said, boy, this is some strange shit here. I said, you know, people can't see you with shit. Then they get mad when this shit don't sell and they try to return it to the store. You can't return every damn thing. Not everything is for return. Some of this stuff is like, look, you buy it, that's it. But a lot of people ain't thinking like that. A lot of people want you to come in and, you know, just buy their shit. You know, you ever go to a convention and you see all these... Uh, Little white stickers on stuff, and they got crazy ass prices. I remember when the Battle Android Trooper, um, and I think it was the Battle Android Trooper in the in the either the Viper or the Alley Viper. I remember them damn things they had them at the conventions for fifty damn dollars. I'm like, yeah, for one toy. So if I wanted two, that's a hundred bucks, dude. FOMO ain't that bad with me. The reason why I say that, some things you got to let go. And sometimes you got to look at it for what it is. It's not just haters destroying the collecting community as a whole. It's the damn people who out here preying on you, man. Basically, you know, sitting there looking at you like, ah, I know you need these. Same thing in the video game community. Same thing in the comic book community. 
Same thing in the Funko Pop community. Same thing in Hot Wheels die cast. Cars, small electronics, gym shoes. The same thing. Clothes. All of this shit. It's the same thing. You get those resellers that mark shit up. Oh, man, I know I can get at least $30 for this. You know, I'm like, damn, okay. It sells for $5 in the store, but I could get $30 for it. man. And I'm sitting here thinking like, damn, you know. You damned if you do and you damned if you don't. Now I see <coughs> if it's figures and shit nobody want and you just buy it all up. I can't say shit about that. But, you know, you reach the store before everybody get there. I remember I was looking at certain stuff in the store, man. And, you know, dude, you know, you run into people doing dumb shit in stores, man. And, uh, dude, like I told you before, I hold on to my shit. Whatever I'm buying, it's in my hand. So if you come taking shit out of my hand, I'm going to hit you upside your damn head. I'm just being honest, man, because, you know, people will try your ass. People feel some kind of way. Dude, like I tell you, I collect a lot of shit. And I'm not here to be on dumb shit, man. I see so many people talking about, you know, certain things, man. And you know, man, man, I paid like a thousand dollars for a PlayStation 5. And I was like, why? Man, I wanted a PS5. I said, but why? I said, shit, if you wait a while with anything, you can find you can find PS5s at your grandmama house right now. That's just how the market is right now. And the thing is with that, you know, people are shying away from buying it right now because they're like, Shh, I don't know. You in January. People ain't buying shit like that, big ticket items in January and February. We're in February now. And I know y'all was like, but you said January. Anytime after Christmas, people ain't buying shit up until like Easter time. Because that's the general time. You got Christmas and you got Easter where people just, you know, really shop for toys and things like that. Look, again, as we sit here and talk as grown-ass people, talking about a hobby that we all love and hold dear to our hearts, things that, you know, spark our imagination, bring back childhood angst and, you know, times that we spent with our friends, man. You know, you always troubled by those people who look to make a profit off of that. Now, again, these toys behind us don't cost that much to make. They don't. They're made in sweatshops. Bro, come on now. You know, none of this shit is made in the U.S. You know, uh, I don't know about McFarlane stuff, but I don't know. I don't know about NECA or Super 7, but I'm pretty sure a majority of this stuff is made overseas, bro. And if it's made overseas, that means you didn't pay a lot for this stuff, man. You know, maybe shipping you paid a hell of a lot for. But see, these are things that I'm thinking about, man. Just the overall feel of our community right now is off, man, because you got so many people upset they upset because they can't find shit they quitting because scalpers don't raise the damn prices you know to obscene amounts and everybody feeling some kind of way can you blame them can you get mad at people for just being upset for a while you could be upset as long as you want to man and i'm looking at it just like this man there was certain figures that popped up man those retro um carded figures x-men dark phoenix avalanche long shot Multiple Man, um, Spiral, those figures right there, I wanted those figures. And, you know, somebody had told me, you know, those figures were here in Chicago, you know, the surrounding suburbs and in Chicago. But, you know, I see them all on eBay. And I see that they're in Illinois, so I'm like, oh, shit, maybe they just scalped them all. And fam, you know what? <laughs> you feel that way because you like, damn, the figure was like $5.99. And this motherfucker won $30. I'm like, shit, I'm not on pay over retail for something that wasn't even retail. I'm like, man, because I remember when Ross was doing this thing back early in last year, back in November, you know, when all the toys started hitting, really. People wasn't charging that much. People, when those Marvel Legends hit, you know, like the ones for the Bone Breaker Wave, people were charging like $15 until they realized that this is something that was sought out of and they started jacking those prices up to $30 and $40. And I'm like, yeah, at this particular point in time, there's no need for none of this. When you start hitting obscene amounts like that, I'm not one for it, man. I'm just not you know i got my own shit i don't feel like putting up with that i don't feel like paying an arm and a leg and you talking about look i gotta pay you know my shipping costs i gotta pay taxes i gotta uh 
buy the merchandise. I get all that. But you know what? I don't have to put up with none of that, man. If I'm not liking what I see, man, I'm just going to leave that shit alone until I find what I'm looking for. Like I said, it may take some time. Certain things, man, I'm taking my time with certain things I'm not worried about. Certain things I'm pushing to the back of the burner, man. You know, like I told you, you know, the action figure standpoint, you know, as far as all of this stuff, man, I'm slowing it down. I was focusing more on masks right now and helmets and just having fun with that, man. From every moment and every time, you got to switch it up because sometimes the availability of stuff, man, it really peaks. And, you know, and I know people say, well, at that particular time, you should stop. I get it. But, you know, sometimes you your interests go somewhere else and that's where you go. You know, like when... My interest changed for a while from action figures and switched to comic books. And I was buying comic books for a while, you know. Um, last time I had like damn it, like 25 totes of comic books. You know, the ones that you could put like two rolls in and those type of crates. And man, I mean, I had so much, they all were boarded. And I had over like five or 10,000 of them, I think. Dude, I had a lot. And before that, I had like 3,000 that I had to get rid of, man. And see, that's the thing about hobbies, man. It's a value in every damn thing. And people make it seem like, you know, stuff that you collect don't boast a whole value. That's not true. People collect liquor. I'm talking about old liquor. They collect that. They collect old wine. You know, like I said, hobbies are different, fam. And, you know, old wine and old liquor is very expensive. So why shouldn't the stuff that you collect be any less valuable. You're putting money in it. You're making sure that your stuff stays pristine, not bad, you know, even though it ain't in the packaging. You know, I know there's a lot of inbox collectors and a lot of outbox collectors. And, you know, I know a lot of inbox collectors, they like to keep their stuff in boxes. And the people who take their stuff out, some of them keep the boxes. Bro, I don't have the space for all that. I just don't. I don't have... You just just the place to put all that. So I just leave it for what it is, man. I either collect this way or I collect that way. You know, if you really want to understand the detriment of how bad the scalping has really affected this community, just stop and take a look at it. It's not just, you know, uh, you sitting back and thinking to yourself like, man, you know, maybe if you stop buying, you know, they'll stop selling it at these crazy prices. Bruh, these people going to sell shit at prices. And there is going to be people who want the stuff because they like, man, I've been waiting on this and I can't find it nowhere. I can't blame you for paying the arm and a leg for something if this was something that you had your man set on for the last damn year and a half. Dude, it is what it is. Stores cancel your um, pre-orders and, you know, sometimes shit messes up in their system. Sometimes they just cancel them on for the hell of it, man. But you sit back or you ordered something, man, and it haven't arrived yet. Like I said, that sun, man, that shit was at Target on pre-order for damn near two or three years. I had this shit three years before it actually hit <laughs> Target, man. And I'm like, that's the problem. Those are the problems right there. You know, besides the distribution and the manpower to put stuff out, you got people coming and just buying it all up, and you like, damn. You know, you be like, damn, the shelves are a little too empty. When they too damn empty, you know something happened. That whole X-Men 97 wave, I did not see that. You know, I looked online, and I seen some, and I was looking through, like, you know, like, the shipping part, and I was like, you know, how much the shipping is on cost, and where is it coming from, and a lot of it was coming from Illinois, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you playing, then a lot of the uh, DC Multiverse stuff that I was looking for, coming from Illinois too, but I'm like, how are they getting this stuff, so they might have a connection with the people inside the stores, you know, maybe they give them a little bit, or hell, maybe the scalper is the person inside the damn store, it's just real, man, because, again, at the end of the day, shit, a lot of you all say that these people are not making no money and they're making a bad minimum, so they looking at, hey, look, I'm looking at a way to facilitate a change in my life, and that change in my life is going to be some shit that I'm about to do right here. I'm about to make this happen for me, and a lot of people out there, that's what they're doing. They're shaking and baking, you know? The store can't tell you you can't buy the stuff. If you got the money and you pay for the stuff off the clock, and you bought it, and it's not street dated, they can't say shit. Their job is to sell the merchandise. 
And that's the thing that I learned. When I was in retail, they told me two things that you cannot do. They said, you can't buy shit while you at work, you know, like on your shift. If you're on lunch break um, or a break, you can buy any damn thing. You can't buy street dated stuff, stuff that's supposed to come out at a certain time. You can't buy that before time. And I understood that, but there's ways around that. And we all know that there's ways around every damn thing. So, you know, just thinking of all of that, man, you know, like it could be an inside job. It, shit, it could just be somebody in cahoots with somebody, you know, to get a little kickback. Because you ever wonder, you look at these things online like YouTube and you start noticing the Hot Wheel car people. They got people that will come out, managers will come out and put eight cases of Hot Wheel cars out there for them to open up and to put them out. And they get the ones that they want out. But, you know, again, a lot of people don't understand. That's free labor, too. I get you putting it up, but also I get what I'm looking for. So it's a win-win. And see, this is how I was trying to figure out. I said, man, because I said, this guy buy a lot of the treasure hunt. Maybe he's just a collector of the treasure hunt. Then I realized he was selling all this shit. And I'm like, uh. So it lets you know this shit is real, man. There's money in scalping. There's money in reselling. You know, not all resellers are bad. And I'm going to be honest, not all of them because, shit, I've been getting good deals. You know, good deals for me. And I'm going to say that again, for me. Not everybody, you know, like, the deal may be good for them. The deal was good for me. And I just want you to keep that in mind with all this stuff, man. We're dealing with a lot of shit here. We're having a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, we need to understand, look, we all need to stick together. You know, if you don't want to pay those obscene prices, don't pay them. That shit will go right back where it's supposed to go, to the store. You know, as you noticed a while back, you were seeing returns up the ass. You seeing returns at Walmart and Target from Ross and all of that shit because they couldn't flip the shit as fast as they thought they could. So what happened was they were to return the shit to Ross. Now, don't get me wrong. People were returning shit to, um, they weren't returning it to Ross. They were returning it to Target and Walmart. But that wasn't just the gig. You know, some people wasn't just intending to buy the stuff from um, Ross and return it to Walmart and Target. Some people were out there reselling and they were like, damn, you know, this shit ain't selling. How am I going to get my money back? I don't want $5. I want more. And that's when the Target and Walmart hit and some people hit. Like I said, scalpers got ways People out here, you know, they find a way to get past the system and say, I'm winning. But, you know, in the long run, you hurting every damn body, man. You know, we miss the product, the people who really want it. Some people don't even want the damn product. They just buy it to buy it. Dude. But to later, thank you for watching. Peace out.